I see the amyloid theory going? Well, number one is that the uh, Biogen uh, drug, Adjahelm, is approved. I don't know if it'll continue to be approved. Physicians are um, hesitant to give it because of the side effects, aside from the cost. And it's not surprising there'd be side effects for a couple of reasons. One is there'd be vascular problems, as suggested. But the other one, aside from the vascular problem, which is never reported and, and except by us, is removing the amyloid is really risky. If it's playing this antioxidant role, which it does, I mean, number one, if you, um, you look correlational, how much oxidative stress there is versus how much amyloid's deposited, you see an inverse relationship with an R squared of 0.95. If you um, take, uh, if you look at iron-mediated oxidation, oxidative damage, iron or copper, you'll actually see that the amyloid is, sequesters the metals so they don't cause oxidative damage. That's probably the mechanism. Is it stops, um, stops the destructive aspect of metal turnover. So if you remove that response, the inflammation, um, it's risky because it would depend whether it's too much or too little. And we're removing something from the brain that we don't even know what it does really yet. It's very, um, I mean, the, the idea of the amyloid idea is more simplistic than I teach in freshman college biology. I teach freshman college biology, and this idea is, would be, I think it's too simplistic to even teach in that course because it, it, there's no precedent for a response of a non um, non-defective person having a response which is only bad. And that's what the amyloid cascade hypothesis suggests, that people have a response during the disease that causes the destruction of the brain. That would mean that it's selected for. There's no precedent for that type of an idea. So there's no precedent for it in biology. The observations show that it has antioxidant activity in vitro. In vivo, it has antioxidant activity. Removal from by biogen did not benefit patients. The most it did by st statistical manipulation was that maybe some of the people didn't decline as much. That isn't what's promised by the amyloid cascade. What's promised is the actual improvement and recovery. The brain is very plastic from all experiments and able to recover to some degree. Many people recover from strokes when they're old. And here you have amyloid and you remove it and nothing recovers. Doesn't it, it's, there's no precedent for it. So there's a, a tremendous number of inherent conflicts in the idea. Uh, was it a good idea to begin with when it was proposed, you know, 25 plus years ago? It was one possibility because uh, you have to propose something in order to have an hypothesis to move forward. But when data doesn't fit, then you have to, uh, you have to move to something else. You have to come to a different idea. And that doesn't mean you reject amyloid either. The genetics says it's important because there is this association, but how is it associated? And the approaches being used for the most part, aside from ours, are all focused on it being something evil.